the remedies for the injury, and fourth, the means of pursuing and achieving reparations from the injury itself. Well, let's take each in turn. I'll, I'll spend more time on remedies. But the definition of the injury, you know, even though we say that the white man did something to us, a lot of times, it's not too, a lot of times, we're not clear what he did. <laughs> That's part of the injury. <laughs> list of things. We, we really got a long list against our president. I mean, like, people talk about stolen labor, stolen land, brutality, but all of that, I want you to know, all of that pales besides and is subordinate to the central injury of Holocaust. No matter what other case you make, and no matter how many cases they take to court against insurance companies or against employers, don't you ever forget this is not an economic question. No. It's a moral question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you put that on the table first. Then you add the rest of that to it. So if we're talking about uh, uh, ill-gotten gains, if we're talking about prejudice and segregation and half-price employment afterwards, ghettoization, deculturalization, all of that is rooted in and stems from the Holocaust of enslavement. Even the position where you get less paid from the white for the white, uh, less paid than the white man for doing the same job your housing problems, your educational problem, your problem of identity in the world comes from what he did to us during the Holocaust of enslavement. People, oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, that's what they say. Well, nobody tells the Jews that, you know. Somebody said, well, you know what? Let me tell you this. We, we, uh, y'all, y'all, uh, some of the richest Africans, y'all more rich than all the Africans in the world. Well, let me tell you something for that. The Jews in America are the richest Jews in the world. Nobody said that solves the problem of their Holocaust. That's two different issues. Any riches we got, we got against obstacles. Not because America gave them to them, but because we took them in spite of oppression. That's racist in itself to imagine that white people are responsible for any wealth we have. Please. The injury is Holocaust. And you have to keep in that because if you don't keep on that, they'll turn it into a commercial argument rather than a moral one. And what you have is slave trade. That is a commercial venture with unfortunate collateral damage. The killing of millions of people can be dismissed as collateral damage because we call Holocaust slave trade. That's right. The most morally meaningful term for genocide in our century is Holocaust. And a Holocaust, by definition, is a morally monstrous act of genocide that is not only against the people themselves, but also against humanity. It expresses itself in three basic ways. The moral and monstrous destruction of human life, the moral and monstrous destruction of human culture, and the moral and monstrous destruction of human possibility. The destruction of human life ranges from 10 to 100 million people. The destruction of human culture means the destruction of cities, towns, villages, great works of art, great works of literature, books, libraries, and the people who made them. And the destruction of human possibility means lifting us out of our own history, making us a footnote and forgotten casualty in the white man's history, and poisoning our relationship with people around the world by teaching them to hate us 
and to devalue us and to fear us when they encounter us. Do you know what that means to walk in the world already with predispositions against you? That's why the white man is always on edge. When he go now, he's on. He can't go around the world like he used to do. He don't know what's going to happen. Look how many years we walked in fear, and how many years we walk in fear even now when we see a police car. Think about the fear he is sowing in Palestine, dropping bombs every night, selective and constant assassination of leadership, dropping personnel bombs, demolishing houses collectively. And look at what he did to the Native American, just killed him until he got tired and pushed the rest on barren land called reservations. That destroys human possibility. Do you understand that? I always asked you, suppose we could have lived in peace in the world, developed according to our own pace and understanding. What kind of new exchanges we would have had in the world? What new sciences would have been developed? What new understandings of the universe and the ocean could we achieve if we left free and developing along the lines we were? How much? more advanced would humanity be. That's right. That's right. I charged the white man with genocide, yes. with holocaust, yes. with mass murder. Yes. The list is long. Write it out and put it out there. No. Do it in a systematic way. Don't let the lawyers just go in there and win you a couple of doo-doo dollars and end the conversation. They'll easily do that so they can stop the dialogue. That's why we need a reparations movement. We don't need people prematurely calling rallies. We need, in fact, a movement. And that movement, that movement has to pay respect to Encobra. That's right. We That's might develop right. a larger coalition than in Cobra, but we must respect the work that in Cobra has done. That's real, y'all. And you can you can you can help that be if you talk out, if you stand up. And don't stand see a lot of times we don't got in the movement, we got scared. We don't defend nobody but ourselves, and that's too late. Uh. See? You let the people, everybody in the world call agents talk bad, character assassinate people, and then when it comes to you, you don't have no defense. Because you haven't built up a principle of non-character assassination. You see? You don't defend leadership. You don't defend good enough. I mean, when I say you, I mean one doesn't. <laughs> what does that mean, one? No, we all have to take responsibility. Is that fair to say? Yes. So let's define the injury correctly as Holocaust. Who's responsible for the injury? White men say, y'all are. Oh, Don't blame it on me. Y'all did it. Y'all stole each other. Sitting right here. Look at y'all. In fact, he got, he got black people, some black people, going over there asking the African to confess. The continental African. In fact, a priest told me uh, the other day, and I had to tell him it was a bad time for me to tell him because something else was going on, but I told him. I had to do it. I think that's why a lot of times people get mad with me because I speak the truth. But he was saying he was very impressed because a Catholic priest from Africa had stood up in the National Black Conference of Catholic Bishops and had come had apologized, had apologized, I'm sorry, sorry to have had apologized for his any role his ancestors played in enslaving us. You know what's wrong with that picture? We are the Africans. So what's the African apologizing to another African? It's a white man 
that's a primary perpetrator. 